Now, regarding this whole IV thing in relation to Islam and all that stuff, a lot of things have come to light. Now, there is no actual proof that Islam or any specific fighter has used an IV at UFC 284, but Ali Abdelaziz came to the defense of Islam potentially using an IV, and he posted on Twitter and deleted it, and even Errol Hawani believes that Ali made a mistake probably uncovering something, and they told him to take it down. Without actual proof, we can't say anybody did anything, but it has created a lot of speculation. And this is what Ali said, quote, for all those idiots out there, any fighter under the UFC banner can take two to three liters of IV as long as it's done by a nurse or a professional next week. I'm going to expose everybody is a Makashev is the pound for pound king on quote. So Ali is clearly wrong about the two to three liters thing. It's 0.1 liter, right? 100 milliliters is 0.1 liter. Two to three liters means 2,000 to 3,000 milliliters. Definitely not allowed under any commission. And with him coming to Islam's defense so hard like that, and remember, Ali was not there, right? Ali was not in Australia. Him coming out to defend IV usage and then saying Islam is a pound for pound king does look really bad. And then maybe he found out you can't use IVs in Australia or something and he deleted it. Whatever happened there, I have no idea. But it definitely is not a good picture for him to defend two to three liters of IV usage. And with this whole debacle, we just found out from various sources now, information that IVs are in fact legal, but only in some places, and Australia is not one of those places. Australia prohibits any use of IV, doesn't matter what it's for. So this is what the Western Australian Combat Sports Commission has to say. I'll read the whole thing for you guys, but there's only a portion of it that really matters. Quote, the commission will include the following wording in its code of conduct to prohibit rapid weight loss by dehydration. There should be no attempt to make weight by any artificial means to dehydrate, as such means increase the risks of contestants may be seriously or even fatally injured during contests. In the interest of contestant safety, the commission prohibits the use of heat suits, saunas and any other device which purposely increases body temperature and or dehydrates the contestant wait you can't use saunas in australia what how are you going to stop that from happening wait so how many fighters violated the rules in australia if they used a sauna i'm pretty sure a lot of fighters use a sauna it's a basic method to cut weight i really wonder what they expect to do in order to lose that kind of weight or fighters should just move up weight if it's too hard for them. Now, this is the important thing about IVs. The commission also prohibits the use of intravenous therapies, which are used for aiding rehydration from excessive and deliberate dehydration. For those who don't know, intravenous is an IV. Right there, it tells you prohibits any use of it. You can't use it at all. Any promoter, trainer, or other person registered with the commission found to be encouraging the use of such methods will be sanctioned by the commission. Any contestant known to be using these methods will not be allowed to compete. So even though in other places you can use an IV up to 100 milliliters, not 2 to 3 liters like Ali said. I don't know why he said 2 to 3. And they have to be done by some kind of nurse or professional. And that opens up a whole can of worms because does the nurse have to be from USADA or the UFC? Does the professional also have to be from there? Can you get your own? If you can get your own, I could definitely see where some fighters can cheat because you can mask in PEDs with the IV that could definitely be used in under 100 milliliters. So this is what we found out about the IV usage. This is reported from Brett Akamoto, quote, according to the UFC USADA handbook, an IV could be used if it is determined to be medically justified and within the standard of care by a licensed physician and administered by a licensed medical professional, unquote. So by that, it doesn't say it has to be from the UFC or from USADA. You can kind of get your own. I could definitely see where fighters can get their own medical professional and things can get murky from there. Then Brakamoto says this, quote, I saw further clarification and here's the bottom line. If an athlete is administered an IV of more than the permitted 100 milliliters, as long as it's done by a licensed pro, it is not a violation, even in cases where dehydration is the issue being treated. In other words, IVs used to treat severe dehydration caused by cutting weight are not really banned as long as the physician is the one to justify and perform it, unquote. That is what Brett Akamoto has to say. Not only do you need an IV for like some kind of medical reason, some kind of illness, but even if it's dehydration, this is news to a lot of us because I believe Paulo Costa got suspended for an IV usage. 
maybe he used more than 100 milliliters, but it turns out that you can actually use an IV for dehydration. Now, what Brett failed to mention is that in Australia, you can't use an IV at all. Now, this is straight from Jeff Nowitzki, who finally is speaking out about this. I don't know why it took so long for anybody to mention this publicly, unless we just didn't know, unless we just didn't realize anybody talked about it. But this is what Nowitzki has to say. Quote, UFC anti-doping program's IV rule was modified in 2019. Athletes, managers, and support have wrecked multiple advisories on this rule change beginning in 2019. All UFC anti-doping program's rules have been publicly posted since 2015. The IV rule advisories included the following. IVs are now permitted without a TUE. Those wrecked in the course of hospital treatment, surgical procedures, clinical diagnostic investigations. Those wrecked from a licensed medical professional after a licensed physician determines they are medically justified. IVs of less than a total of 100 milliliters, separate from the anti-doping program rules, Athletic commissions require any athlete who receives an IV during fight week to obtain permission from a commission before receiving an IV and disclose use of that IV to the commission after its use. Despite the fact that IV use is not permitted under the UFC anti-doping program, if administered by a licensed medical professional after a licensed physician determines they are medically justified, the required disclosure of such use to an athletic commission could possibly jeopardize the commission licensing the fight. So that is really interesting, man. So it turns out since 2019, fighters have been able to use an IV technically legally. And as long as they can get a physician to say that is justified for them to use it, they are able to use it. So it's a loophole to actually use an IV. That's crazy. Since 2019, I wonder how many fighters used it. And I really wonder how many fighters mass something with this in the words of nate diaz man everybody's probably on steroids this is a really big deal when it comes to anti-doping as well as rehydrating because some fighters i don't think even knew this was a thing how many fighters did not know that you can rehydrate like this it definitely seemed like volkanovsky in his camp knew that they can't use an iv because hooker was coming out and accusing is a of using an iv i don't know if they knew that you can't use it in australia and that's what they were saying or they didn't know you can use a period we don't know exactly if islam did it because we need concrete proof i'll say this if islam did not use it nothing happens he should be accused of it right but if it turns out he did use it the outcome of his fight with alexander volkanovsky would have to change because again, in Australia, you can't use an IV no matter what. I understand the whole rehydration thing that he didn't have as much time to rehydrate before the fight. After the weigh-ins, he's a big guy and stuff like that. But you can't use it regardless, right? You took the fight in Australia. You called Al Volkanovski in Australia. You have to go with what comes with it. But this is not only about that fight. This is about all these fights now. We know now every fighter could potentially use an IV outside of the Australian commission because the commission has to give you permission to use it. And whenever an IV can be used, there's also a potential for PEDs to be used as well. And what I know about a lot of fighters are, if there's a path to get an edge on their opponent, they will absolutely take it. Man, my suspicion on fighters has increased even more because there are some fighters who definitely look like they might be on something and they don't get caught, but now there seems to be a reason as to, and now with this whole IV thing, there could be a reason as to why some of them may be getting away with it. I'm not going to say any names or anything, but 